Tarantula Crib sent me one of their new coffin enclosures and I'm really excited to get this set up. So let's do this. Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. First of all, I want to apologize if you hear cricket noises in the background. I fed my tarantulas yesterday and apparently some of them didn't eat all their crickets. So you're going to hear cricket noises throughout this video and I apologize for that. As far as tarantula enclosures are concerned, Tarantula Cribs sent me a few tarantula enclosures to set up for Animal Con. Because I live in Florida and Animal Con is in Orlando, it's easier for him to ship them to me, have me set them up with tarantulas and everything so that he can put them on display at the convention. And I'm super, super excited about this one because this one is the coffin crib. And not only is it the coffin crib, it is the large coffin crib. And this is one of the newest designs that he's put out and they, it looks super cool. So I'm already thinking about how I'm gonna set it up. It's gotta be something that looks good, something exciting, and I, it's gotta have a cool tarantula in there so that it can attract people's attention. So all of those things are playing in my head right now as to what I'm gonna do with it. But first, I just want to look at it because it just looks so cool in the pictures. I want to see it in person. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get into this. I am excited to get a look at it. This thing is so tall. All right. Let me flip this thing upside down. Boo! There we go. Boom. Oh, this thing is so sweet. Let's get this plastic off. All right, you ready? That is awesome. Can you believe it? This thing is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm really impressed with this design. The fact that it's shaped like a coffin is just great. Let's face it, those of us that like creepy crawlies also like creepy things, and what says creepy more than a coffin? So that is an extra bonus for us. Now, the other thing that really impresses me is the design itself. These, This is not just a plastic box. You've got curvatures right here and here, which tells me that there's no seam there, and that makes it just even sturdier so there's less chance of cracking or you know warping or anything like that it's going to keep its shape and it's really strong um, the other thing that really impresses me about this is the lid itself the entire front of the enclosure is a lid but it's got a plastic lip there to kind of hold everything in place it's got really strong neodymium magnets on there that are very tough to, to fight against. So if I pull, I really got to use some strength to open that up. So you're not going to have any escapees with this kind of lid right here. The fact that the, the magnets are super strong like that, that's going to make sure that your lid doesn't warp very easily because um, plastic Acrylic does tend to absorb moisture, and if you have a high humidity species in here, then you might end up with some warpage on some of the other types of lids, but this lid is gonna fight warping, and I think they're starting to use moisture resistant acrylic. So that's an added bonus for these types of enclosures. Another thing that impresses me about this design is that not only can it be set up arboreal, you can also set it up terrestrial. So you just lay it down like this and that makes it a terrestrial enclosure. The uh, ventilation holes that it has right here are set up for both. So that's, you know, an added bonus to that. It's a dual purpose enclosure. So now to rack my brain, what am I gonna put in here and how am I gonna set it up? So let's get to that. The fact that the enclosure is a coffin got me thinking. So I 3D printed some skulls because what's a coffin without some skulls in it, right? 
And after a little bit of artistic magic, I painted them up to look like real skulls. So let's put them in. And I thought about hot gluing the skull to the enclosure, but I hate hot gluing anything to any of my enclosures because it makes a mess and it's kind of permanent. It's hard to get off of anything. So I've decided to use gel tape. You might even know it as alien tape. And it's very forgiving and it's super strong and reusable. So I felt like that was my best bet. And that way I could make sure that I secure it, but it's not going to be something that is going to be too permanent and leave a nasty residue behind. So there's one of my skulls. And you can see how I can position it and then tack it down. So it doesn't stick too hard at the beginning, but once you tack it down, it is going to be real hard to pull off. But this way I can gauge where my skulls are and I can move them if I have to. I feel like I'm slightly off center there. And you can see there, it comes right off. Let me stick it. And put it where I need it. And I think I need to recenter the skull. There we go, perfect. For my substrate, I'm gonna be using Repti Soil, just cause I have it on hand. And I'm gonna be using a piece of pork bark for the hide. And I don't want it to come up so far that it hides my skulls. And I do wish to include a little bit of plant material. I'm hoping it will grow. It's doing well in my other enclosures, but there's no telling how it will do in here. And that's known as silver baby tears. Put a little bit more substrate back there to bury it. So it takes off. And I'll add a little water dish. We printed that myself. All right. So what do I want to put in? I have this Pasilotheria Formosa known as the Salem Ornamental. And she just molted and she is in dire need of a rehouse. So what better time? All right, let's hope she doesn't bolt for me. But I get the feeling that she might. Oh, she's being spicy. There she goes. 
Let's get a better look. Oh, there she goes. Isn't she gorgeous? And she just molted, so she's probably hungry. She's going for a walk. Let's see if we can get her to go the right way. So I was changing out lenses, and she decided to take off on her own and go inside the enclosure. So there she is. I'm not sure, but it looks like she might be a tad bit thirsty. Or she might just be facing off with me. There you go, girl. There's your new home. Oh, look at her. Yes, she is. Get you a nice little drink. So after she's had her drink, I'm going to see if she's hungry. There she was. How about that? A beautiful enclosure for a beautiful tarantula. And I like the way it turned out. I think the skulls are a nice touch. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, I kept it minimalistic. I just put a, a cork bark in there for her hide because I wanted her to be the focus of this, this enclosure. And I did add some plants in there, the silver baby tears. Um, the reason I put those in there is because they're doing very well in a different enclosure that I have. And I'm hoping that they'll take off in here as well. They're very easy to grow. You just cut a little bit off and put it in there and it just kind of takes off. And in fact, I got these from that other enclosure because it's doing that well. I had to trim some of it. So hopefully that'll make a nice little carpet on the substrate there and it will look nice and naturalistic. But of course, the skulls just give it that extra creepy touch for a creepy enclosure. So I'm really excited to see what people's reactions are going to be about this enclosure because um, I think the skulls really, really add a nice touch to them. Those are something that I 3D printed for a different project that I'm working on, but I, I haven't completed that project yet. So I figured I'd steal those and, and 3D print some more. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, 3D printing opens up a whole new world as far as being able to decorate for your enclosures. I just did a video where Shane Spiders sent me a bunch of 3D printed stuff 
stuff that I'm going to use and you're going to see more of when I do more rehousings and decorate more enclosures. But, um, you know, you got people that are making all kinds of stuff. I see a lot of little hides that are made for jumping spiders and they're just coming out with all kinds of little cutesy stuff, like things that, you know, look like little houses and stuff like that. So yeah, 3D printing does a whole lot as far as being able to decorate your enclosures. So hopefully I'll be able to get my project out here in December, um, maybe sooner than that, but I'm, I'm, it's something I've been working on. So that does it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Tarantula Cribs, thank you so much for the enclosure. I really appreciate it. It is beautiful. And I hope I did a good job showcasing it for you so that people can enjoy it at the convention. I'm in the process of setting up all the other enclosures you sent me so that we can get them over there and people will have a good time looking at them and looking at the tarantulas. And if you would like to own your own coffin crib or any other of the tarantula cribs, you can do so at tarantulacribs.com. And if you use the discount code THAY, even 10, you can get 10% off your order. And last but not least, I hope to see you at Animal Con if you plan on attending. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas. Tarantulas.